I'm actually kind of really sad because I just realized that like my spine is broken. When this came in the mail the other day, I noticed that like the back was a little bit, you know, ripped up. But then I just noticed now that like my spine is a little bit ruined. And to be very honest with you, that makes me really sad, but I'm a little bit too lazy to like, you know, replace this and have to go all the way to UPS to drop this one off. So I think I'm just going to have to live with it. But I'm about to start this book, A War of Two Queens by Jennifer L. Armentrout, book four in the Blood and Ash series. And I've decided that I'm going to vlog it for you guys and share my thoughts as I go along. So I actually already did full recap videos for the first three books in this series. If you missed it, I'll have them linked in the description below. But I did chapter by chapter recaps for anybody who either wasn't down to do a full reread of it or just like didn't have the time, whatever reasoning is. Like I basically went chapter by chapter and I share with you everything that you need to know that happened in the first three books so that you can prepare yourself for book three. So I got my reread over and by the time that I finished the end of book three, I honestly was a little bit burnt out. The first three books were so world building-y. They were so info dumpy and I just remember enjoying the series a lot more the first time I read it last year. So now that I did my reread, I honestly, I'm not as into it as I was when I read it for the first time, which is kind of making me hesitate hesitant to pick this book up, but I am going to pick it up because I already spent all that time rereading it. I spent all that time recapping it. And if I don't do it now, I don't think I'm ever going to read it. And I already own it. So like, let's kind of get it over with a little bit. And I know that's not like the best way to go into a book, but at the end of the day, like that is kind of how I'm feeling at the moment. So I also, I, I mean, I'm like two days out of like the release day. So it's currently Thursday and this came out on Tuesday. And oh my God, the controversy that like is surrounding this book at the moment is so overwhelming to the point that like, I basically already know almost everything that's going to happen in this book. So first I got warned that, oh, by the way, this entire video is going to be very spoilery. Like starting from right now, if you don't want to know things about this book, then don't watch this video at all because I, I already know what's happening in this book and I'm about to tell you. So with that said, I already know what's happening in this book. So the day that it came out, I got a bunch of DMs warning me, like you might not want to read this book because there's a trigger warning in here for you that, you know, you might not be comfortable with. And people are basically like, you know, saying that this book is full of emotional cheating and like, you know, Poppy basically like cheats on Cass. I'm like, what the hell is going on with this book? Like they're heartmates. I cannot see that happening. So then I ended up like deep diving the one star reviews in Goodreads. And I basically learned a lot about this book. People are having very mixed feelings. People either think that she emotionally cheated. People aren't happy that like, you know, Kieran, Cass and Poppy finally go through with the joining that we have been like, you know, hinting at for the first three books. And like, in general, people are just did not like this book. And I kind of went like deeper and deeper into it. I spoke to some people who have already read it and I kind of feel more comfortable going into this book thinking like, okay, I'm not going to be triggered. Like, I don't think I'm going to end up feeling like this book was emotionally cheating, but at the end of the day, we're going to have to wait and see. So the thing is, is that like, I, I already heard like so much about what's going to happen in this book that I couldn't help myself because this isn't the first time I do it. I like spoiling myself for books, but I ended up going to the ending of this book and I read the joining scene. I read the scenes that like, you know, led up to the joining. And then I kind of like, you know, skimmed the ending of the book a little bit. So I kind of already know you know a handful of what is going to be happening in this book I know I, I already know so much but at the end of the day I still think that like I will have a lot of interesting reactions as we go through it so now that you know that we're on the same page of like I already know what's kind of happening um I'm I'm gonna get started with this book and then as we go along I'm gonna share with you my thoughts anyway I'll tell you what I think you know as I start thinking it and hopefully I'll be able to stick in a full review into this vlog, you know, at the same time as I'm kind of like, you know, reacting to what's going on, but we'll see how this goes because I have a hard time really like shutting up. So, you know, um, this might end up being like very long and I might have to do, you know, a full, like, you know, review at the end of this. Like I'll make a whole separate review or maybe I'll just stick it in here. We'll see how it goes, but hopefully I will enjoy this book. I I'm very tentative going into it. I'm very iffy about this, but I kind of want to get it over with. I, I kind of want to see what everybody's talking about. So I'm going to get started on it the next day. All right. So last night I did end up getting just about halfway through. I'm currently at page 
305 and to be very honest with you not that much has happened but i am actually surprised with the things that i have to complain about because they were things that i wasn't expecting to be complaining about based off of everything that i've heard about this book so the first 200 pages i got i'm not gonna lie were very rough i don't think that things really started to pick up until around the 200 page mark like the first 200 pages were so like you know they were still that info dumpy repetitive just like changing things that we already knew to be things that like, you know, we thought were one thing turning into the other. Like that's one thing that's very much bothering me about this series is that, you know, we're learning something. Then we talk about it. We think about it. We get the inner monologue. We get the conversations. And then after we, you know, we talk about it three, four times, all of a sudden we find out that it's not what we thought it was. And then we find out different information and we do it all over again. And that was my biggest issue for, you know, um, A Crown of Gilded Bone book three. And I'm very much still feeling like that in this book like every time you learn something new I'm just like this isn't something new this is something that we thought was something and now it's actually something else and I just can't really stand that very much like I don't think that that is a good way of building a world like I'm not someone that is like necessarily against world building like there are a lot of fantasy series that throughout the entire series you are still learning things I'm not against that I'm against the way that we're going about it in this series specifically the way that we handle it and the repetitiveness of learning things and talking about things and the conversations, the inner monologue, everything along those lines, that's what I'm not a fan of. And I'm definitely still feeling that very much in this book. And therefore I, I'm, I'm not really liking it, but I do like that we are starting to see some of Cass's POV. Like every here and there we are getting like a chapter from him. And I do like that considering the fact that we're 300 pages into this book, halfway through this book, and he is still not saved. We find, I am getting to the point where like, I know he is about to be saved. Like we finally got to Carcedona and Poppy is now on her way to like, you know, go to the Blood Queen. And like, I know that therefore we're gonna see Cass and we're gonna save him. Like, you know, right around probably the next 50 pages or so, but in my opinion, Opinion, that is way too long to wait for it and I did know that it was going to take that long going into the book so like I'm not like that upset about it but I am upset about the idea of it like I mean Throne of Glass somewhat spoiler I mean it is a spoiler but it's such an old series that I, I, I think I could like say it easily but in Throne of Glass when you know everything happened at the end of Empire of Storms right at the beginning of Kingdom of Ash that is what Rowan was doing and yes it did take 250 pages to get Aileen back but the way that it was handled even though I thought that yes that was a very long wait I thought that it made sense especially because the book was like a thousand pages long so it was really like what a thousand to one thousand that was one fourth of the way not you know just over 50 percent of the way and, and I think that that is a much bigger difference of having somebody wait to you know get the couple that we're rooting for reunited so I I do have a very big issue with that I don't think that you know that I don't think anybody signed up for this book to be half of you know po Poppy and Castile not being together and therefore I am bothered by that idea and I mean yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, how do I go about that? So, you know, that's that. That's my thought on that. I do, I do like seeing Reaver though. That is like my one positive point that I do have to say about this book so far. Like the little glimpses that we're getting of Reaver, who is the Dracon, like I do like seeing him. I like his personality. I think he's kind of funny and I'm down for it. But besides for that, like there's not much more that I'm down for. So this is going to be a little bit negative, but like, you know, we are starting to see this whole like dream thing that Poppy and Cass can do. And I just, I'm like, you know what that is a fine way to like get them to interact because we are waiting so long to like you know see them get together but at the same time it's like just more things that we're throwing out in the world like you can't just build a world and then all of a sudden when you want to like make a plot point work you just throw in some information of like oh yeah well the magic system nobody ever told you this but it does work that way like I feel like I feel like that doesn't happen in other series and because it happens here it's like extra bothering me so like now that they're heartmates they can dream like I mean I, I, don't, I don't know I mean it makes sense but at the same time I'm just like eh, I'm not so into this whole like dreaming I really feel you there but like you're not there sort of thing like it's just I'm not really so down for it but I do like seeing that like you know Tani is finally awake and I did think that that whole like you know conversation that we had about like Victor was a little bit funky and that is another thing that I have to say about like just this world building idea like the things that she throws out for us to like figure out some stuff in the world just it doesn't sit right with me but that did happen and I, I mean I do feel like yes some questions are finally getting answered like you know we finally did like hear everything about the right which I am like 
I, like, you know, more information that is getting spilled of like, we thought something was one way and now all of a sudden it's another way, which I'm complaining about. But also I feel like that was a question that we had for a very long time. So the fact that we did finally get some answers about the right and the history of the right and stuff along those lines, I mean, I'm going to give a thumbs up for that. But Besides for all of that, one of the biggest things that I was worried about with this book was, you know, the whole Cass and, I mean, not Cass, the whole Poppy and Kieran situation. And I'm going to be honest, and I don't think that this is something that you guys might have thought that I was going to say, but I don't at the moment where I'm at, at 300 pages, feel like it is necessarily emotional cheating. I feel like it's more of like an emotional support vibe, you know, like I feel like it kind of makes sense with their progression of their relationship. Like throughout all of the previous three books, we were seeing that Poppy and Kieran had a very intimate relationship while not having an intimate relationship. I mean, just the fact that like Kieran was like there for so many times of like Poppy and Cass actually having sex and stuff like that. And like, I mean, just the dynamics of their relationship in the previous times, like the way that they would talk to each other back then, I don't think that it necessarily changed in such a weird way in this book that people are like freaking out about the emotional cheating. Like I actually am like somewhat okay with it. And I feel like if I didn't hear about the emotional cheating before going into this book, I don't think I would have thought about it and I don't think it would have bothered me, but now I'm like looking out for it. You know what I mean? And I think what's kind of making it weird is the inner monologue and the things that other people are saying. Like I even had it written down somewhere. It was like Tawny had come and she said, why is he acting like your husband? And until she said that, I actually wasn't thinking anything of it. And I'm like, Kira was actually acting like kind of normal. Like what was she like referencing on, you know? And then it's like, the one funky scene that, okay, I'll admit was like a little bit iffy and like I see where people are like pulling it apart is the time when Poppy had to feed from Kieran and they they got, you know, somewhat like, you know, interesting, especially when, you know, she went and went into his thoughts and then he especially said of like, well, I changed my thoughts. I kind of wanted you to see that because I thought you would react in an interesting way. And I'm like, okay, I see where people are going with it, but at the same time, it also, I don't think that it is extremely out of character for them to have done that. And I also don't think that that whole situation of like, well, he showed Poppy the moment that he was looking at Cass and Poppy when they were kind of making out at that wedding. Because at the end of the day, Poppy and Cass were looking at Kieran when he was getting a blowjob. So the fact that he was looking back that way, I don't see it being that funky because Cass was okay with Poppy looking at Kieran and they actually had a whole fine conversation. So the fact that Kieran shows that like, you know, oh, I'm actually looking at you too. I was looking at you too at that time as well. I was like, I don't think it's that funky. And like, okay, like some comments, I feel like, yes, people can like pull them out of context, but to be completely honest with you, I'm not that bothered by it. And I don't feel like it's too out of whack that Cass isn't there when all of this is happening. Like, I feel like it all makes sense. And like, it, I, I just, I'm not bothered by it. So that is my take on it at the very moment. I feel like, you know, there might've been more that I could have mentioned, but yeah, my biggest thing is that I thought I was going to be bothered by the whole Kieran Poppy thing when I really do think that, you know, at the time where I'm at, at this book, it's not as funky as I imagined it to be, but the world building is definitely bothering me. And the fact that we have to wait for, you know, more than 50% of the book to get Poppy and Cass back together is not something that I'm down for, especially because I think at this point in the story, we're here for Poppy and Cass, you know, that, that's what pe most people are here for. I don't think we're here for the intricate world building because I think most people have had enough of it. So like at the end of the day, I'm not liking the book, but that is my take on it at the halfway point. Many hours later. All right, so I finished this book and I gotta say it was not as bad as I was expecting it to be, but also I didn't really enjoy it. So I had ended, I last told you that I think I was like, what, halfway through, I was at like page 300. So at a, I think it was page like 336 where we finally got to see Cass for the first time. Like Poppy finally get to like lay eyes on Cass. And then I think it was like, page like 395 or so where we got like the scene where they were actually gonna like break him out. So the fact that it took about 400 pages to finally get Poppy and Cass more or less back together and get the story like back on track, I think is 
way too long. I'm forever going to say that the worst thing in this book probably was the fact that it took so long to basically free Cass. And then on top of that, the world building, without a doubt, the world building was probably also like an equal measure of like what I didn't like in this book. And that, and kind of the fact that like it was a little bit slow, not much happened. I think this definitely could have been condensed a lot. I think I thought that with like every single one of her books, but like whatever, I don't know. I guess she doesn't have an editor or something. That's not, I'm not here to judge. All I'm saying is that I think it was longer than it needed to be. I think that it, it definitely was a little bit boring here and there, but it did pick up and feel a little bit more interesting once Cass was back in the picture. So like I actually kind of really did enjoy page 400 to the ending. It's just that like, you know, it took 400 pages to actually get there. Like I think like once Cass came, everything started to finally like fall into place and things actually started happening, which is kind of what I wanted. So, you know, if maybe we got to have like, you know, saved him in the first like 100 pages, then this book would have been a lot more interesting and entertaining for me, but it wasn't the case. And therefore I didn't really love it. And besides for that, I don't really have much to say. I think it was, it was an interesting ending. I, my issue is, is that I think I've just lost interest in it. I, I can't stand the world building. We're still learning things at the end of this, at the end of the last chapter, we're still learning new things. And I just, I don't like that a lot. It's just, it's not my vibe. I'm sick of learning new things over and over again. I'm just, I think I'm done with the series. We'll see what happens when like the other books come out. But like at the moment, like, I mean, I'm happy that I read this and I got it over with because I really do disagree with a lot of what everybody is saying. But at the same time, like, like, I don't know, I, I don't feel like, oh my God, I just read a really good book. You know what I mean? But back on the whole like Cass and Poppy thing, like after reading this, I'm not Cass and Poppy, the whole like Cass and Kieran thing, like after reading this entire book, I still stand by my word of what I said halfway through of that like, I don't feel it was emotional cheating at all. And like, I, I think that people are kind of, you know, like taking like little, little, like very small instances, like out of proportion somewhat. Like, I do think that yes, Kieran kind of like, I guess, pushed boundaries in some ways, like the way that he would like touch Poppy sometimes, but I don't think it was like, in a bad way. I think that's just like their relationship, you know, like, I don't know. I, it didn't weird me out. And that's saying something because I am so freaking touchy on cheating in any sense of the word. So for me to say that, I really think that like, you know, you should take my word for it. And like, you know, it, I just didn't think it was weird. That's all. But obviously everybody has their own opinion. And if you were uncomfortable by it, like I get it because I saw it, but at the same time, I think that it fit into their character dynamics. Like I think that it, it, it worked, you know, it made sense to me and therefore I didn't find it weird. What I did find weird though, is the threesome, like the whole joining scene, like what was weird, who belonged to who? Like I, I could not keep track of that whatsoever. It was probably like the worst sex scene I've ever read in my entire life. And it's kind of interesting interesting because I don't think that like Jennifer L. Armitrout writes bad sex scenes per se. Like, I mean, they might not be like, you know, the best ones that I've ever read in my entire life, but I don't think that they're necessarily bad. And then when we got the joining, which I gotta say, I have been waiting for it for like four books. I'm happy that it finally happened, but the way that it happened, the way that everything was explained of like, you know, oh, I don't know who's touching me weird and I don't know who this belongs to. Like, I'm sorry, but like, it was so freaking cringy. I almost, I didn't even want to read it. And I, I very much do have to bash on that. I think that it could have been done so much like, you know, sexier and dirtier. And like, we could have gone all out there because I think it would have been a lot more fun that way. And I don't think it would have been weird because, you know, it's just, it's the vibe of everything but besides for that I feel like I don't really have much more to say I feel like in this vlog it wasn't very vloggy it was more of like you know reviewy so I don't think I'm really gonna make another review for this book like I feel like I kind of more or less got almost everything that I wanted out and I feel like I said everything that I wanted to say it was it wasn't a bad book I really I see why people thoroughly enjoyed it and I kind of see why people are very much bashed on it and I feel like I feel like I'm falling kind of in the middle. Like I really enjoyed the second half of the book. The first half of the book really ruined it for me. And I can't, I can't forget about it. The first 400 pages, that's, that's the majority of this book. This was only 600 and something pages. So for 400 pages for me to like have zero interest in reading it, I, I can't give it more than like possibly a three stars, but I, I see, I see its potential and I see why people are obsessed with it. Because if you liked A Crown of Gilded Bones and you don't mind the world building, you don't mind, you know, the repetitiveness and kind of the boringness in the plot and how almost nothing really happens and you're just, you're here for the ride, I see why you enjoyed it. But for me, I just, I need a little bit more to happen. 
I need a little bit less inner monologue. I need a little bit less repetition and I need a little bit less world building in the sense of, you know, that we're, we still are learning things at the end of the fourth book in the series. It's just, it's too much for me, but it, it was still fine because once Cass and Poppy were back together, I actually kind of enjoyed the rest of the book. So that is that. I, I don't want to sit here for any longer because I feel like I'm just going to go in circles. So I'm going to say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, if you did, give it a like and also subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And with that said, thank you for watching. And until next time, enjoy reading.